evening. We've just had some amazing photographs sent back by the American probe to Mars, Mariner 6. Uh, Mariner 7, by the way, has been brought back under control, and we await news from that. But meanwhile, we have this superb series of close-ups from Mariner 6, and I'd like to show you those pictures now, beginning with Mars, as seen by Mariner, from a distance of more than 700,000 miles, which, of course, is a great deal further than the Moon is from the Earth. And even so, you can see there some of the dark areas, which may be vegetation, and at the bottom you can see the white polar cap, which has always been thought to be due to some kind of icy or frosty deposit. So let's go in now to 572,000 miles. And this time you can see there, on the left of the centre of the picture, that V-shaped marking, which is known to astronomers as the Certis Major. It used to be called the Hourglass Sea. And uh, just in passing, all these pictures are shown with north at the top and south at the bottom, which is the way the Americans do it. And again there you can see the polar cap. Let's go in now to 463,000 miles, and now the details are starting to be even more distinct. And at the top, we can see the polar snows of the Northern Hemisphere. At the moment, it's winter in the Southern Hemisphere of Mars, and summer in the Northern Hemisphere, and this, of course, explains why the Southern ice cap is so much the larger of the two. Now into just over 200,000 miles, so that when this picture was taken, Mariner was closer to Mars than we are to the Moon. And again, you can see the southern cap beautifully, and you can note that the edge of the cap is not hard and sharp. It appears to be rather jagged, and this was something of a surprise. But let's go in still closer to 156,000 miles, and now the dark areas are showing up in all their firmness. And in now to 126,000 miles, and now you can see that the dark areas also haven't got such hard and sharp boundaries as might be thought. But when Mariner went past Mars at only about 2,000 miles, we got the really spectacular pictures. And just look at that. Craters on Mars, very similar to those of the Moon. And the largest crater on that picture is about 160 miles across. And remember, when Mariner took that picture, it was only about as far from the surface of Mars as we are from Moscow. And I wonder how those craters got there. What are they? Are they due to things hitting Mars, or are they volcanic? I believe myself that most of them are likely to be volcanic, but I remain to be proved wrong. And let me show you now the most spectacular of all these pictures sent back so far by Mariner 6. And just look at that. It's a crater 24 miles in diameter, seen from 2,000 miles. And just to give you an idea of scale, the area covered in that picture is about 63 miles by 48 miles. And I think you'll agree that that crater on Mars is very similar to a crater on the Moon. Well, of course, we did know that Mars had craters on it. This had been shown by the previous American probe, Mariner 4, some years ago now. But nobody from Earth has ever actually seen them direct, because Mars is too far away. But all the same, you can see Mars with the naked eye if you want. You can see Mars itself, and if there are no clouds where you happen to be, uh, you can go outside and see it now because it's there, visible rather low down in the southwest. And if you know the bright star Vega and the square of Pegasus in the east and Altair in the Eagle, you can find Mars quite easily. In the Scorpion, not very far away from the bright red star Antares. But in fact, you can't confuse Mars with a star because it is very much brighter and of course it has got this strong red colour. If you look at Mars through a moderate telescope, you can see these markings. And in briefly, I'd just like to show you three of the drawings that I made myself with my own 12 and a half inch telescope earlier on this year. And over there on the right-hand picture, you can see again that V-shaped uh, marking, which we call the Certis Major. Again here, north is at the top. Well, that marking is also shown on the Mariner pictures. And here again is one of those Mariner shots taken from a long way out, showing the two polar caps and the Certis Major. In fact, the markings of Mars, the dark ones, have always been something of an enigma. We know quite definitely that they're permanent, and you can draw maps of them. And in fact, I have got a Mercator map of Mars here, which I drew from my own observations. There again is the Certis Major, and Mariner 6 came down over this direction, over these so-called deserts. Well, the question is, of course, are these dark areas due to organic matter, vegetation if you like, or are they not? And what about those polar ice caps? Well, these also have been photographed from Mariner very nicely. And there again is the southern po po polar cap at the bottom. And you can see indications of the northern one at the top of the picture. And we've got some close-ups also of the southern cap. And there the jagged edge is quite clear. And the question is, are they due to some kind of icy or frosty deposit? Or are they solid carbon dioxide? This is one of the things we hope that Mariner 6 and 7 are going to tell us. Well, those are the pictures. And I think you'll agree they are incredibly good.
But to get the latest news about Mars and Mariner, uh, I had just been in contact with Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California, and there I talked to Dr. Pickering, who is in fact in charge of the investigation. And I asked him about the latest news from Mariner, and in particular, what was the news about those strange icy polar caps? It, it appears as though the, uh, the South Polar Cap, uh, which photographs up very well in the pictures, uh, does have a, um, a sharp edge on its northern boundary. And in fact, uh, when we look at this in detail, we see that the sharp edge uh, appears to be following the outlines of some craters. Uh, so that uh, it must be on the ground and must be uh, following the, uh, the local topography. And on the other hand, the southern edge of this polar cap does not seem to go all the way to the pole. And this is very curious. Uh, I think it must be due to some sort of haze which is covering the actual pole. We hope that on Mariner 7 that we will get some close-up pictures of this area of the planet uh, so that we will uh, know much more about it after the flyby on Monday evening. What do you think is the cause of the polar caps? Uh, water ice or frost or solid carbon dioxide? <laughs> Let's wait until we get a temperature reading, <laughs> <laughs> which, we, which I hope we will do on Monday. You know, we got some very good temperature readings with the infrared uh, radiometer um, on uh, the flyby last Wednesday night, uh, but that was more or less along the equatorial part of the planet. Uh, this time we will uh, be uh, c conducting a flyby which will reach right down to the polar regions. What other things have you, have you got of particular interest at the moment? Um, well, the other things I think that are of interest are the ultraviolet data. Uh, this uh, gives us some indications about the uh, nature of the upper atmosphere, and uh, the fact that we uh, found no nitrogen, I think, is very interesting. Very interesting indeed, and I think this question of the Martian atmosphere is all important. And of course, these pictures have come in, and already the experts are starting to discuss them. And I'm glad to say that we've got two of these experts here in the studio with us for this evening's Sky at Night. We've got Dr. Gilbert Fielder, and we're also delighted to welcome back Professor Samuel Tolansky. And I'm going to ask Professor Tolansky first what he thinks about these pictures, and in particular, what he thinks about the famous canals of Mars. Well, I'm very particularly struck and intrigued with the fact that uh, these pictures show a great similarity to the moon pictures. We see an enormous number of craters, and I think this ties up with a theory which is a sound theory, in my opinion, about how the moon and Mars both originated at the same time. This theory is this. The Earth is supposed to have spun round very fast, like that, and in spinning, bulged at the equator. Then, when, when bulging, the bulging increased, and gradually instability set in and the little neck developed something like an hourglass and finally a huge piece about a tenth of the weight of the earth was thrown off this is mars a smaller piece about one percent of the weight of the earth was thrown off in between this is the moon but at the same time an awful lot of debris thrown around now according to this theory the moon mars should have the same structure the same density as earth rock and so they have they have very they're very similar and uh, it's probable that all the craters on the moon were due to this debris pitting the moon, at least a lot of the craters was due to this debris pitting the moon, and uh, it's very likely that this debris, the similar debris pitted Mars. So you think, in fact, that these craters on the moon and Mars were produced by a kind of bombardment? A lot of them. A lot of them were, I think. There right. may have been uh, some of them which were volcanic, but a lot of them were. And because of that, this is why I predicted that on the moon uh, there would be little marbles. And I think there will be the same thing on Mars, only they won't be circular, they'll be pear drop because of the atmosphere. Well, I don't think Dr. Fielder quite agrees with you on this one, so I'm going to call him in now. What do you think about it? Well, uh, I, of course, uh, there must be impact craters on Mars. I think the point that, uh, that I wish to make is that uh, there may be more volcanic uh, craters than uh, people have been thinking. Mars is close uh, to the asteroid belt where it will get bombarded more than the Moon, of course, and there will therefore be more impact craters, one would expect, on Mars than there are on the Moon. They may have been eroded out more quickly on Mars, however, because it has an atmosphere and, and water and so on and dust. Well, uh, if we look at some of the close-up pictures of Mars, this one here, for instance, uh, shows a, a crater 24 miles in diameter and uh, it is not quite circular, you'll notice, it is slightly polygonal and there are many of these linear features on Mars, ridges and troughs. Uh, the next picture will show a similar um, uh, crater and these uh, linear features uh, are characteristic of things produced internally by tectonic forces uh, and possibly volcanism. Uh, we know this from the study of the moon. And therefore, I think the, the evidence uh, based on these polygonal craters and these linear features, these linear troughs and graben and ridges, uh, is that there is at least some volcanism on Mars. And I would be inclined to say there's probably quite a lot. 
What about this question of the canals being strings of craters? Well, uh, I don't believe there are canals. I never did believe there are canals. And uh, uh, it's my view is that, that uh, in the past, people with insufficient resolving power have seen chains of craters due probably to the uh, to meteors coming in along trajectories which are fairly common. And a chain of craters, a line of craters which you did not separate, would look like a line. And as, as to whether why this changed in colour, I think that's merely sandstorms. There is an atmosphere, there is probably a sandy surface, and in uh, different times of the year, sandstorms would change the colour of the surface. Now, what about this all-important question of life on Mars? Do you think that these dark areas are due to anything organic? What do you think about it, Dr. Fielder? Well, I think the question is still to be resolved uh, by use principally of spectrometers, which uh, are carried, particularly the infrared spectrometer and the ultraviolet spectrometer on board uh, Mariner 6, um, which will look uh, for bands in the uh, infrared part of the spectrum which are known to be characteristic of organic molecules or plant life if you like. If these bands are found to be sharp and in the right places then by comparison with vegetation on Earth we will know that there is vegetation on the surface of Mars. What do you think about that? Well primitive life there may be. I don't even think so. Intelligent life certainly not. So in other words, you rather think that Mars is a dead planet? Absolutely dead as a dodo. Well, I suppose one of these, one of these things we're going to find out fairly soon. Well, another person whom we asked about this uh, was Professor Sir Bernard Lovell. And we went up to his home in Cheshire and we asked him what he thought were the most striking features of these pictures of Mars sent back by Mariner 6. Well, the most obvious feature of these Mariner photographs is, of course, the craters which we see. And uh, the surprising thing to me is not that there are so many of them, but there aren't a lot more. You see, Mars is uh, much closer to the asteroid belt than the Earth and the Moon, and calculations indicate that the rate of impact of asteroids on Mars is going to be about 20, or has been, 20 or 25 times greater than that on the Earth and the Moon. Well, now, on Earth, why aren't we full of craters like this? The answer is a very simple one, that over a few thousand million years of our evolution, they've largely been weathered out and are now lakes or such things. On the Moon, we still see them. Now, on Mars, the situation is intermediate. Mars has an atmosphere. At the surface of Mars, the pressure is only a tenth of that on Earth. But at a height of about 20 miles, the atmospheric density is about the same. And uh, on the whole, one would have expected, I think, to see at least the uh, rather more craters than one sees on the Moon. Therefore, I suspect that these features of Mars, which we're now seeing, are rather young. By that, I mean perhaps less than a thousand million years. If this turns out to be the case, uh, then the situation is extremely interesting because it will give us important clues as to the changes which have occurred uh, since uh, Mars was formed from the primeval material. Uh, biologically, I don't think the situation has been changed very much by these photographs. There must still be intense interest and importance attached to the future biological investigations. It, you see, it's extremely likely uh, that the, the planets Earth, Mars and Venus uh, began their development in roughly the same form and in the beginning, at least, had the same type of atmosphere, but because of the difference in, is in differences in mass and temperature, because of their different distances from the sun, there have been these uh, vastly different atmospheres developed, uh, where we have large amounts of CO, carbon dioxide, both on Mars and Venus, and uh, which are now uh, uh, not very favorable to life. Nevertheless, it would be extremely important to investigate the existence of any primeval life forms. Of course, we haven't yet got the full story, and in particular, we await the results of Mariner 7, which is going to pass over the Martian Pole. But already, we've learned much more about Mars than we've ever known before. And I think now, in a few weeks at least, we ought to have an answer to that age-old question, is Mars a dead world, or is it a world where there are things which live and grow? Good night. <laughs>